Hallelujah. Greetings to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is Pastor and Missionary Evangelist Brad Spurlock coming to you with another episode of Blessed Hope. And I'm glad that you have tuned in, and I pray that you have tuned in with divine expectation, not to have simply a time of, of gathering of men, but to have communion with God Almighty, just as with Moses when he came to that tabernacle of meeting, that tabernacle to encounter the presence of the living God, that we can have a, a divine encounter today, because whenever we have a true encounter with Jesus Christ, we are not the same, forever transformed in his presence. And so so let us just pray right now, given this time unto the Lord, and then we will get right into the reading of the scriptures. Father, we thank you for today. Holy Spirit, have your way in this place. I pray today, Lord, for salvations, miracles, signs, wonders, for encouragement for your people to call in the lost to salvation, destroying the works of the devil, setting the captives free, breaking every chain of bondage, of darkness and oppression in the mighty name of Jesus as the word of God goes forward. Your word is living and powerful. Lord, that transformation will come to the masses today. Salvation for many today, God, and even to people's households, God. Lord, that lives will be utterly transformed, Father. Lord, and undone and made and molded and image and crafted in the image of your glory, God. So, Lord, Holy Spirit, have your way in this place now in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. I'm going to be reading today in the book of John, the 21st chapter. And so this was after the crucifixion of Jesus and then Jesus was still, he was appearing to his disciples because they needed still encouragement at this point for the, the, the task ahead. Because Jesus, he, he, did not, he did not come to establish a democracy. It was to, uh, uh, to rule and reign over a kingdom, which he was the chief cornerstone, the foundation. We build upon that even still today. And so here, though, when we look at this uh, in verse 1, it says, after these things, Jesus showed himself again to his disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. In this way, he showed himself. Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana and Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other of his disciples were together. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. Beloved, this already right here is a lesson to us all because at this point the disciples were still discouraged they had this in, in they envisioned jesus as this ruling and reigning king to come and set up his kingdom and authority at that very instant to depose the romans to kick them out of the promised land and to set up his kingdom right then and right there but god his plans are higher than ours his vision is beyond ours they were just seeing their generation. Jesus looks far beyond. Jesus is always operates in the supernatural. He was not just concerned about that generation, but from generation to generation until his glorious return. But still, the disciples here, they were in the flesh, or they, they it, it's human nature. But God has called us beyond human nature to truly walk with him in ways that we have not seen nor understood. But still here, they had seen Jesus as crucified, but they had also seen him uh, appear as well, but they still needed further encouragement from the risen Lord. And but still, Simon Peter, one of the leaders of, of the 12, when we look at the inner circle of James, Peter, and John, these were some of the key figures within uh, the, the, the disciples. Now at this point, 11 disciples, but still here, they looked to Peter. And Peter, what did he say to them? I'm going fishing. After all that they had seen, all that they had heard, not just the declaration of the word, but the demonstration of the power of God Almighty in Jesus Christ, because Jesus Christ is God. Jesus Christ is our ruling and reigning Lord this time and forevermore. He had seen the miracles. He had seen the feeding of the multitudes. He had seen the lepers cleansed, the dead being raised, the blind eyes, the deaf ears, the chains of darkness delivered. He had seen and, and heard the words of Jesus. And so, but still here in 
in the time of discouragement when they thought that they had been left alone, what did he do? He, had, he went back into the flesh, into his own thinking and natural abilities. And what did he do? He retreated. He de deviated from the plan of God for his life. And he went back to fishing. Jesus did not call him to be a fisherman any longer. He had called him to be a fisher of men. But in this time of discouragement, time of confusion, when the time of even disillusionment, he went back to what he had known in the world. Beloved, I am here today. Holy Spirit of God is prompting me right now in times of discouragement in your life, in times of disappointment, in failures, and when people abandon you or persecute you, talk ill of you, these are not the times to retreat and regress, to go back into, into in the things that we had known before or even into the back into the areas of our comfort zones of things of past. No, when God calls, when Jesus Christ calls us, it is a holy calling. It is not the calling of this world. It is a divine calling of God Almighty, specifically forged and fashioned for you, beloved. So when he calls, even when the problems come, when the abandonment comes, the persecution comes, we persist in the faith. We continue to walk worthy of the holy calling with which we were called. But beloved, here, Peter, one of the leaders of the apostles, what did he do? He regressed back into what he had known before. I am going fishing. Beloved, I pray today. I pray today that this word would penetrate your heart, that God Almighty walks with you. If you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, behold, today is the day of salvation. He can renew you. Transformation can come today. And even if you have been walking with the Lord for many years, he is still sticks to you closer than a brother. He is closer than our next heartbeat, closer than our next breath. We are the dwelling place of God Almighty. Even though many are the afflictions of the righteous, the Lord delivers them out of them all. And so we must stand firm, stand in the faith, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Not strong in the, in the flesh, but strong in the spirit of God Almighty. When we stim simply stay the course to remain faithful, even during the storms of life. We will see God Almighty show up in wondrous ways. We will have renewed strength, renewed vigor and vitality, but still forged in our soul and in our spirit, man, to continue to walk firmly before the Lord, bearing good fruit in and out of season, being a, a bearing fruit in the hard times, in the difficult times. Even when people retreat, we are still advancing because God has not called us to retreat, but to continue to advance the kingdom of God, regardless Regardless of the circumstances of this world, Lord God Almighty, He is the Lord above every storm. He is looking for the faithful today that will believe the word of God as it stands and continue to walk faithfully before the Lord. But here, Peter, what did he say? I'm going fishing. And they said to him, the other disciples, we are going with you also. Look how contagious this was. They all were in confusion, but beloved, when you stand strong, when you stand firm in the faith in Jesus Christ, you will also be an encouragement to others, not a discouragement to when people, when they are on the precipice, <clears throat> when they're on shaky ground, when, when, when things are not going their way, they can be easily swayed. But brother, it takes that next step of faith, that one person that will say no, that just like with Moses, when the multitudes were ready to cower and retreat and go back into slavery, it was that one man, that one man that had a relationship with God Almighty, that walked in intimacy with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, but at this point revealed and through God Almighty, <clears throat> when he stood firm in the faith, it was the one man that God used to change the course of history. And we still read about him today. Hallelujah. But here, Peter, one of the leaders, when he said, I'm going fishing, the others quickly followed after him. When discouragement or even fear, it is interesting with fear, with Gideon, when they were selecting the 300, <clears throat> one of the first 
things that had, they had looked at was fear. If they were in fear, send them home. Even in Deuteronomy 20, when they were looking at as far as selecting the men of war, that was one of the selections as well. If there's any fear, send them home because it will it is contagious. It will contaminate the others as well. And so here, they had fallen. They had fallen in suit with Peter. We're going fishing with you also. Jesus had called them. Jesus, his calling and his election are sure, <clears throat> but the discouragement, the disappointment had affected them to such an extent that they regressed and went back into the ways that they had known before. And they went out immediately, got into the boat that night, and they caught nothing. They went out under their own direction under their best logic and, and decision-making, they thought, what can we do in this difficult time? We can go back to what we have known before. And so when they went, and these, many of them were professional fishermen, they knew how to fish, but their best skills and abilities, it came up to nothing. They had caught nothing, even though they had tried their best. And when they came back in the morning, had now come, Jesus stood on the shore. But the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. They were, they were already at this point. They were walking in the flesh. They were walking in, in, in the middle of their cares and their problems and the confusion, the disappointment and the disillusionment that they thought that Jesus Christ, he would have come and surely set up the kingdom and kicked out the, their oppressors at this point. But his ways are higher than ours, beloved. But still, even during the points of, 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 of lowliness, of discouragement, Jesus Christ appeared to them. You know, it, it says that his anger is for a moment. His favor is for life. Weeping may come for a night, but his joy endures for a night, but his joy comes in the morning. Hallelujah. And so Jesus Christ, he had come. Even when they had caught nothing, when they were following their flesh and not following in the spirit, walking after the things of God, that Jesus Christ, he is the good shepherd. Jesus Christ, he will not leave us. He will not forsake us. Even when we deviate from the things of God, when we, when we drift away, when we are distracted by the cares of the world, the good shepherd still comes after us. The good shepherd still wants our heart. He wants his relationship with us. No, brother. No, sister. Don't look at the problem. Don't look at the discouragement, the frustration frustration and the failures, thinking that why is this happening in my life? No. When God calls, God decrees, God declares, God will fulfill the very word which he has put upon your life, beloved. But you must be firm in the faith. You must be faithful to walk in the accordance of what God has laid out before you. And so, but still, when they had deviated and started to walk in the flesh, they had caught nothing with their best skills and abilities. But this is when Jesus came. And when Jesus comes, everything changes. When Jesus touches, lives are transformed. The dead come alive. The blind see, the deaf hear. The, 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 those that are in captivity are liberated in a moment where Jesus saw sickness, he healed it. When he saw those that were in bondage, he set them free every time. Oh, hallelujah. And so, beloved, today can be your day of salvation. Today can be the day where the bondage is broken off of your life. You don't have to live in addiction or depression or in spiritual bondage any longer. I speak from experience. My God has delivered me in such a wonderful way. He continues to walk with me. He talks with me. I commune with him. I am the dwelling place of God Almighty. Even when people abandon me, when they when I walk alone, I never walk alone because my Jesus, hallelujah, his spirit lives in me. I am the temple of God Almighty. Hallelujah. I'm excited for you today. The Holy Spirit of God is in this place. The good shepherd showed up at this point of discouragement. And Jesus said to them, children, have you any food? He already knew. When Jesus asked a question, it is never for his benefit, it's for yours, it's for mine. He knew what they had already tried, walking in the flesh, trying to, to figure it out and solve the problem on their own. It came up to nothing. But when he comes, he searches, he probes, he pursues those that have deviated because he loves you. This is not about a religion. It is about a relationship with your creator. 
This is why I broadcast. This is why I come to where you are, because the love of God has changed my life to such an extent I know it can change yours as well. Hallelujah. And so the disciples, they answered him, No, we've tried, but no. We have tried many times in our lives, and we failed, and all we can come up with is no as well, or empty-handed before the Lord, or forgiveness, or humility, or, or shame. But God can truly give beauty for ashes if you surrender it to him. If you surrender your life to him, he can make all things new. I am not here to tell you that he will take away all of your problems and life will be easy from this day forward. No, the Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. He walks with you. He is your guide, your, provi your provider, your protector, your refuge, your strong tower. And so I am not here to tell you that my life is easy as well. It is not, but I know my place of position and authority in the kingdom of God. I know that when I walk with my God, when I hear the specific calling of the Lord for me specifically, personally, intimately, then I walk with divine expectation in my spirit to see his glorious hand in operation in the land of the living because I seek his face. Oh, hallelujah. And they said to him, no. And Jesus, he said, cast out your nets. On the right side of the boat, and you will find some. This did not make any sense to the disciples. They had just tried all night. They had caught nothing. These were professional fishermen. These were not amateurs. This was their profession. They knew how to fish. But still, it went beyond the natural. Beloved, we have choices to be made in our spiritual walk with Jesus. It is time to close our, our, our the, the physical eyes, with, which limits us. It is time to truly walk by spiritual sight, to truly walk by faith and not by sight. Our sight is is limited to the physical surroundings. Our sight is limited in the natural. Faith is unlimited and supernatural. And so but when they responded by faith, even though they did not understand in their logic and rationale, because God supersedes our mind, our will, and our emotions, the realm of the soul. The sons of God are led by the Spirit of God. It is supernatural. Our God is supernatural. Those who worship Him, worship Him in spirit and in truth. And so his spirit bears witness to our spirit. It bypasses, this supersedes the realm of the natural and into the supernatural. And so when they responded, they cast out their net and they were not able to draw it in for the multitude of fish. Hallelujah. When they had tried, when they had struggled in the flesh, they had caught nothing. Because Jesus did not call them to be fishermen any longer. But when they came back, when they saw Jesus and responded to the words of Jesus, when Peter got out of the boat and walked upon the water, it was not in his strength and power and ability. It was because Jesus said, come. It was upon the words of God Almighty. This is why I say when you can develop the relationship with God to walk intimately with the Lord, our creator, our master, our redeemer, the lifter of our head, when we know the voice of the one that we love. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. When you hear this voice, when he speaks, he speaks as a king. The word that comes from his mouth, it never comes back void. It prospers in the very thing for which it was sent. But you have a choice to be made. It is your decision. Will you follow or will you retreat? Will you take the next step of faith and leave the, the realm of experience of what you have already um, uh, experienced before behind you and take the next step of faith further? They did not understand, but they responded. And the multitude came because they were not called to be fishermen, but fishers of men. Hallelujah. And so the multitude, it was a supernatural response that comes naturally when we follow the words of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, glory, Lord. I pray today, whatever 
the trial, the tribulation may be in your life, that you stand firm upon the holy calling that God has placed specifically upon your life. If you do not know what your calling is, it is time to get on your knees before the Lord in the secret place, in the intimate place, where there are no distractions of the world around, to come before the Lord, travail in His presence, pursue Him, persist in His presence. God speaks as a king, but we must quiet our spirit and hear from the Lord. And so at this point, when you stand up and you put faith in action, God will continue to direct you, guide you, put people in your path as you continue to walk. It is faith and action that receives the miracles. Hallelujah. And so even though they had retreated and regressed in walking in the flesh, Jesus came. And when Jesus came, the transformation had turned things around and they saw the multitude from nothingness to a multitude of great harvest when they simply followed the words of their risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The same applies to us, beloved. Oh, oh. I do not know where you stand before God Almighty, but this God is holy. He is the creator of the universe, the heavens, the earth, all that we can see and infinitely beyond our comprehension into infinity. This God, he is the one Lord, Jesus Christ. But God says of himself, I am the Lord, there is no other. There is no other God besides me. There is one God. And so God is holy. God gave us his word to follow and be blessed. He gave us the Ten Commandments. He said, be holy, for I am holy. And so he gave us the instructions for a, ho a holy life, to walk in holiness before him. But as God is holy, God is love. And in this love, he gave man freedom of choice. And, but in this freedom, we broke the relationship with the holy God, with our sinful actions and behaviors. And so we cannot stand before a holy God in his presence. And even more so, we were all, because of the wages of the stain of sin and, and death was upon us. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. But at this point, we were so depraved, lost in sin, that we could not save ourselves before a holy God. We were all destined to die and go to hell, separated from God for all of eternity. But I have good news, beloved. For God so loved the world, for God is love. For God so loved you that he sent his only son, that whosoever should believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And so God left the riches of heaven. He gave the best for you and I. Jesus Christ, he came down in the incarnation of man. God Almighty, he walked amongst us. He showed us the way to heaven, which was through himself and himself alone. Do not listen to the lies of the world. The world says all roads lead to heaven. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, that no man comes to the Father but by me. He is the one mediator between God and man, and that is Christ Jesus our Lord. And so he is the only way for man to acquire salvation. And so he came and showed the way through himself, and he also he demonstrated the love of God. He is the ultimate expression of God to man. He loved the unlovely. He lifted the distressed out of their situations. Those that were downcast and, and outcast by society on the fringes of, of society. He loved upon them. He lifted them up. He showed the power of God. With one touch or one word, he opened blind eyes and deaf ears. He even raised the dead. The lepers were cleansed. And Jesus Christ, the ultimate declaration and demonstration of the word and power, he said, on the third day, I will rise again. Because ultimately, Jesus Christ, he came to restore the broken relationship between God and man. Oh, come and taste and see that the Lord is good. For blessed is the man who trusts in him. This is the love of God. Who do you know that would die for you? What king would die for you? But this is no king. This is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. This is no earthly king. He came because he wanted that relationship with you and me. It is offered to all. But will you receive? He loved you so much. 
that he went to the cross of Calvary for you and I. He had to pay the price before a holy God that you and I could not pay. He was the sinless Lamb of God that came to take upon the sin of the world to be the sacrifice for our sin before a holy God. The perfect sacrifice because the wages of sin is death and there must be a sacrifice, life for life. And so he had the perfect sinless blood to pay the price, the ultimate price before God. And so when he said on the cross those glorious words, it is finished, after he had shed his blood and paid the price, the broken relationship restored, that he yielded up his spirit, and they laid him in the tomb. But as Jesus declared on the third day, I will rise again. The grave could not hold him back. The tomb could not hold him down any longer. On that third day, as he declared, he ascended in glory and majesty, majesty and power, sat at the right hand of God Almighty, and he lives forevermore. He lives in me. Mm. Ah, hallelujah. And he can live in you. Do you know Jesus as your Savior and Lord? You cannot live a good enough life and go to heaven on your own merit. You cannot pay your way to heaven. You cannot do enough to earn your place in paradise. It is too great beyond us. This is why God came down in the, in, in the manifest carnation of Jesus Christ where you receive the gift of salvation. It is a gift. You do not work for a gift. You don't pay for a gift, you simply receive it into your possession and it is yours. This is the great gift of salvation, but the choice is yours and your eternal destination hangs in the balance. The Bible says, behold, today is the day of salvation. This is your day. The most important question in this life is, what will you do with Jesus? Will you receive him or reject him the choice is yours, but your eternal destination truly hangs in the balance. It is either heaven or hell. When you die, you do not come back. When you die, those that do not have Christ as their Savior will face judgment, but the children of God, and when we die, we will move directly into paradise with our God, and we will be in His presence forevermore, and we will reap the rewards. Oh, hallelujah. It is a call of repentance. It is to be so sorry for our sin that we turn away from the sinful life, which can be done in the power of the Spirit of the living God that draws you, that regenerates you, that makes you a new creation in, in Him, and He comes and dwells in you. And so when you can come to this point of making a decision with a repentant heart to be so sorry that we turn away from the perversion, the sickness, the sin of the world, walk in a newness of life and direction in Jesus, and then... We will truly bear fruit worthy of repentance. And when you can say, Jesus, I am sorry. I repent for my sin. I, I Forgive me. Wash me. Make me a new creation. And you come and be the Lord of my life. From a sincere heart to Jesus, that is it. And then the miraculous transformation occurs. Oh, glory. Behold, today is the day of salvation. If you do not have Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, behold, this is the day. If you do not know where you go after this life, we can remove all doubt. Or if you have fallen away and you need to come back, this is your time now. So I want you to repeat this prayer, not as a repetition of words, but as truly a heart cry from your heart to Jesus. And this day you will know, hallelujah, that you are saved. So repeat after me, your heart repeating these words. Make this your prayer from your heart to Jesus. Lord Jesus, I believe you died on the cross for my sins and you rose again the third day. Forgive me of my sins. I repent of my sins. Wash me with your blood. Cleanse me and purify me. Make me a new creation in you. Forgive me, Jesus. Come and be the Savior of my life. I repent of all sin, Lord. Be the Lord of my life. Take up your home in me. 
and use me for your glory all the days of my life. Amen. Mm. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Beloved, the angels in heaven are rejoicing over you, and I rejoice with them over your life as well. This was the first important step. Now it's time to take a faith walk with Jesus. It is one thing to say yes to Jesus. It is another thing to follow Jesus. And so we want to help you along this way in this new spiritual life to provide guidance and assistance for you. There's a number on your screen, an email. Please contact us. Let us know about this decision of yours to accept Christ as your Savior or to rededicate your life. We want to celebrate with you, but also to help you in this spiritual journey. And so as there is new spiritual life now, you need to do certain things to help the new life grow. You need to go to church. If there's no church in your area, I'm, and ultimately we are the church. I am talking about a physical building where the people come and gather, or even in your homes, have a, 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 an assembly of the brethren. The Bible says, do not forsake the assembling of the brethren, because as the family of God, we are stronger together than we are apart. We are there to help one another, to love one another. We go further together. And so, Read the Bible as well. It is the promises of God for your life. Start in the New Testament, in the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, particularly in John. This was most of the dialogue of Jesus. And so know the word, meditate upon the word, study the scriptures. It is alive and powerful. Put it in your prayer life. And then so go to church, read the Bible, and pray. Prayer is our communication with Jesus. Any developed relationship, there is strong lines of communication. As you continue to pray, you will sense his presence in your life more and more. He will lead you and guide you. And I lastly challenge you in this, beloved. Be faithful. Remain faithful. Jesus said, he who endures to the end shall be saved. It is not in your strength. It is the strength of the spirit of the living God, which now dwells in you. And as you continue to persist in the faith, to remain faithful, God will strengthen you. Even if man forsakes you or abandons you, God will never leave you. He will strengthen you. And when you continue to walk faithfully, he will bless you in turn to be a blessing to others. And if I do not see you in this world, I will see you in heaven one day. Oh, hallelujah. Our God is a God who saves, and our God is a God who heals. I want to say a brief prayer right now. It is the, the prayer of the righteous that God hears, and we can see manifest presence of his glory and power. His healing touch can come into your body, into your household right now. Their distance is no issue with our God. And so let us declare and decree the healing anointing of God to flow, the power of God, his healing word to go forth now. So join with me in prayer right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I loose forth your word of healing. Your eternal name is Jehovah Rapha, God, our healer. By your stripes, my Jesus, we are healed. So I declare healing, Lord, upon your people now. Healing from the top of their head to the bottom of their feet, God. I rebuke every cancerous cell, uh, every diabetes affliction, God. Mobility problems restored, Lord. Chains of darkness broken in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I see for Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, blow now. Move upon your people now. Oh, rushing wind of God, blow, Lord, upon your people. Receive healing now in the holy and the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, amen. This is Pastor and Missionary Evangelist Brad Spurlock. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you, be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Until the next time, shalom. Shalom.